I want to talk to you guys about California's public education system. I am refuting Jonathan Lee's claim that over the past decade, California's educational system has been underfunded. He supports this claim by saying there's a lack of teaching materials, teachers are being laid off, and school districts are lowering standards for students. He also says that the educational system is facing budget cuts and will be in the following year. So I want to refute that by saying that I do agree with some of this, but although the system has been underfunded, California is doing whatever it could to make sure that it's not underfunded. He says that there's a lack of new teaching materials and there's programs. I mean, he says that there's a lack of new teaching materials and program cuts. Well, I agree with that, but I think that there are programs and other stuff in California to make sure that everything is sufficient enough for a good education. Um, so I read about this program called Opportunities to Learn off HuffPost, and it's a program that is in action right now, and it measures whether the teaching materials are sufficient enough for students to learn. Just because a book is old doesn't mean that we can't use it. Like, me, myself, I've learned from old books. It's, it's almost the same thing. There might be a couple changes, but it's basically the same thing. I, I'm still learning. It really depends on the student. Jonathan Lee also says that teachers are getting iPads and computers instead of buying stuff for students. Well, you know what? That's their own money. And they could be paying for it personally. He says that instead of that, he should, we should be giving students agendas. Well, you know what? I think agendas, sometimes they're useful, but not all students are going to use it. Some kids are going to draw on their agenda or like get distracted with it. <clears throat> and also, Jonathan said, or another support of his claim was that also, um, although teachers are being laid off and districts are lowering standards, this could help them graduate faster and reduce our deficit. Because when students graduate college faster, they get a job faster, and they start paying taxes and help fund our education for the next generation. I heard about this proposition called Prop 30, and we'll be voting on it this year. If it passes, it's going to raise income taxes by 1 to 3% for those people that make over 250k a year, or for couples that make at least 500k a year. If the bill fails, however, all the budget cuts are going to be aimed at kindergarten through 12th grade and higher education. So I think that there are also other things that would help prevent the budget cuts, I mean help prevent the underfunding in California for our educational systems. Like recently, I don't think that everything is that funded because recently I just got a job myself. And the job comes from the No Child Left Behind program. I'm tutoring for the We Can Foundation and I tutor little kids, kindergarten through eighth grade. And like, I have no teaching experience, no tutoring experience, whatever, but I'm still getting paid $15 an hour. If there's enough funding, for me to be able to tutor little kids, then I'm sure there's enough funding in California for all our education. Not only that, there are also accelerated graduation programs. Like, I'm sure you guys heard of those programs where there's little kids, I mean not little kids, people our age that are super smart that graduate college in three years. And that could also be an option. Education advocates also believe that strict shortening the road to a degree by, let's say, lowering standards or doing whatever will raise the proportion of students who get degrees and actually graduate college, and it also saves them money. Not only that, a lot of students take classes that they don't need. I got a statistic from the Complete College of America that four-year students normally take 120 credits to graduate but a majority of students actually graduate with an average of 136.5 units, having extra. 
And if there's all these like extra units, like what's the money going to in California? The HuffPost tells me that in the University of Southern California, there's a class called Lady Gaga and the Sociology of Fame. I mean, if we're gonna cut a math class for that kind of class, then our education system isn't really underfunded. It's, it's being spent in a non-efficient way. So overall, like yeah, the education system in California is underfunded and it comes, it hurts our budget deficit. But there are a lot of things that California is doing to try to prevent that, try to make sure that our kids are receiving the education they need for our future and, a, and have a successful future. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, I think some of the things that you're presenting aren't necessarily contradictory to the advocate's point. Sometimes you seem to be supporting the same inference that they're making. Uh, there seems to be a random way in which these arguments are being developed. You need to have a more deliberate application to the advocate's claims. Uh, and uh, sometimes you're making assumptions and, ass and assertions that need some proof. And I don't always know why you're making a couple of arguments that sound contradictory. Uh, in one spot, you talk about about accelerated graduation, uh, that's, you know, that's maybe a good idea. Uh, it comes up again toward the end, and I'm going, okay, well, how does this relate to the issue that's being presented? I don't know. The fact that there's some program out there that's spending money to pay you to uh, be tutoring kids, you seem to be taking that as an indication that we must have plenty of money because they're paying me. Um, you know, I, again, I don't know. There's not much analysis of the advocate's evidence on these points, and I think that needs to be a little bit stronger. All right, thank you all for your patience tonight. You guys be